Welcome back everyone to the date time index lecture. Often the time and date information in our financial data won't just be in a separate column, but instead it will be the actual index of the data frame. Let's discover the built-in pandas tools for creating and working with a date time index. I'll open up a new Jupyter notebook and get started. All right, so to start off, I'm going to do a couple of imports and you can essentially just fast forward through these or maybe you even already have them but I'm going to import NumPy as NP, pandas as PD, and just in case we do any visualization, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And again, in case we do any visualization, let me just make sure matplotlib inline because I'm using a Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now built-in Python libraries for dates and times actually exist, and the one for Python is the date time library. So without installing any additional libraries, you should just be able to say from date time, import date time. And this is Python's built-in date and time library that allows you to create timestamps or specific date objects. So just to illustrate this, I'm going to create a couple of variables. I'll say my year, 2017, and you can basically just make these up. We'll also create a month. We'll say the first, so that's January. We'll create a day of the month. We'll say that's two. We'll also create an hour, you kind of get the idea here. And the hour, it's important to note, is going to be in the 24 hour format. That is something like one o'clock in the afternoon or 1 p.m. is going to be written as 1300 hours. So my hour is going to be between zero and 24 there. And then we'll have a minute. My minute, we'll say 30. And then we'll say my second is, let's say 15 seconds. Okay, so a bunch of arguments there. So if you want to use Python's built-in date time functionality, it's actually quite simple. You would just say my date is equal to, and then you would call date time. And the thing to note here, and this is actually one of the complaints of Python's naming scheme, is that this date time is being imported from the date time library. So it's going to be like date time dot date time. This is a poor naming convention and a lot of people have complained about it, but it's kind of really built into Python and a lot of things depend on it. So it is here to stay. Just keep that in mind that if you just say import date time, it's not the same as from date time, import date time. Okay, moving along, I'm going to create a date time object. And if you do shift tab here, you should see the documentation string. And we can see that it takes in the year, the month, the day, and then it has additional arguments for the time. So let's start off with just day information. That is a date object. And I'm going to pass in my year, my month, and my day. You could also just pass these in as numbers. They don't have to be variables, but this is just for illustration purposes. That way it's really clear what the arguments are instead of just passing in numbers. So now that I have my date, if I take a look at this date object, I have date time dot date time, and then I see 2017 January, that's one, and then the day of the year, or excuse me, the day of the month, that's two. And we can see that it also defaults to 0, 100 hours. So it's important to keep in mind that if you don't provide some time information using date time, it's going to default to 0 hours and 0 minutes. If you don't want that to happen, we could just specify my date time and then set it equal to date time. And I can actually just copy what's here. And then I'm going to add in additional arguments. So it goes year, month, day. And then you can add in things like hour your minute, and then your actual seconds. And now if I take a look at my date time, it actually corresponds to the additional time information. And notice here in this original one, it just defaults to hours and minutes. It won't actually keep providing things like a default second or a default microsecond. Now what's important to note here is that this is not just a string or some sort of numerical object. If you take a look at the type of this object, so I'd say type my date time. It is a date time dot date time object. And that's really important because this date time object actually has attributes that you can grab from. So I can say my date time dot, and then if you hit tab here, you'll notice there's a bunch of things you can do with it. There's also a lot of methods, but for now let's just focus on the actual attributes. And those are things like the day or date. So I can check out the day and it's going to be the second. Or I could check out the month and that's going to be the first. And notice these are attributes. I'm not actually calling here of closed parentheses the methods. These in particular are just attributes of that actual date time object. So that's the very basics of a date time object that's built into Python. 
Now with pandas, we're going to be dealing with a date time index. So you're usually going to be dealing with a time series as an index when working with pandas data frames obtained from some sort of financial API or just reading in some CSV file. Now fortunately for us, pandas has a lot of functions and methods to work with time series data. So first, I'm going to create an example of a date time list or a date time array. So let's just say first two and I'm going to create a list of date time objects. So we'll say date time and I'll pass in, let's say the first of 2016, so January 1st, 2016. And then I will also pass in as a second item in this list, date time and let's just say the very next day. So January 2nd of 2016. I will run this and then say first two. So here I have just a normal Python list of date time objects. So again, if you check the type of this, it's just a list. So I have a list of two date time objects. And what I can do is then convert this into an index. So as we know, we can just convert a simple NumPy array or a simple Python list to an actual index. So we'll say dt underscore ind is equal to pd dot. And notice here, I'm going to say date time index. I just use tab to autocomplete. And this is important to know, it's not just an index call. I'm actually telling pandas, hey, this is special date information. It's not just a normal string or normal number. So I can say pd.datetimeindex, and then I'm actually going to pass in that list, first two. So now if I take a look at dtind, that date time index object, it's now clarified that, hey, this is a date time index. And a lot of times we won't actually have to manually create our date time index in this format. But in case you get some funky data, you may have to do this. So it's good that we go over it. And we can see here now it's kind of formatted a little differently. We can see the dates here and it says, hey, this is date time 64 bit with uh, nanoseconds. Uh, there's no frequency. And we'll discuss frequency later on when we discuss frequency sampling. But here we can see we have date time index and let's attach some random data to it. So I'm just going to use NP random dot rand n and we'll say two by two and let's take a look at that data so here i have a random two by two array i'm going to create two columns just a and b and then let's create a data frame we'll say df is equal to pd dot data frame I'm going to pass in that random data i created and then as my index i'm going to pass in dt underscore ind and then i'll pass in my columns that i just created all right, so here we see our data frame. And of course, as a quick note, you probably don't have the same four numbers here that I do because I didn't set any sort of seed for our random number generator. But this is the main format you're gonna see a lot of our financial data in. It's gonna have the index be some sort of date time object. And then our actual columns will just be the data points themselves. Things like the price of a stock or the price of a future, that kind of thing. So now that I have my data frame and it's index, I can actually take uh, different arguments from it or call different methods on it. I can say something like df.index argmax. And if I report that back, it says one. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means the index at position one. And remember indexing starts at zero. So we see this is zero and then this is one. That is the maximum or the latest date. And that is the 2nd of January, 2016. And if you actually wanted the value itself, you could say df index max and this will return the actual timestamp itself, 2016, January 2nd. And you notice it has no hour, minute, or second information that we provided. So it defaulted to 000. And if you want the earliest, you can do the exact same thing. So df index argmin, that returns the index location of the minimum. If you actually want the minimum value, you'll say df index min, and that returns the actual timestamp. Okay, so very basic here. Main ideas I want to get across is a lot of your data is going to be in this format. And because it's in this format, there are special properties you can grab from these date time objects. Those special properties being things like just calling attributes such as what is the day or what is the month. Later on, we're going to get a lot more practice with formatting date time indices, actually shifting it, calling frequency, sampling, etc. But these are just the very basics. And it's also important to note in case you ever get any errors with date time, remember it's from date time, import date time. Okay. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture.